I'd just like to welcome you to one of the happiest um, groups of studies that you've ever been involved in. And you're going to really love them. Now, now we have 10 of them, mind you, <laughs> 10 lessons in it. We're going to begin today with seven steps to kill your giants. Hey, that's a good one. You, you will really like that. Then seven steps into prosperity. Uh, you will surely like that one. And then seven steps to a miracle. That one you will certainly enjoy. Seven steps uh, to leadership. You will like that one. And the next one is real cute. It's seven steps <laughs> that you should not take into a crisis, then seven steps to renewed youth, then seven steps to defeat the enemy, and seven steps to personal achievement. Hey, there you are. Now that's what we're going to have in this and and uh, in, in these lessons. This is lesson number one. And so there are ten of them. Don't don't miss a one of them because they will certainly they will certainly bless you. And what we want to teach you in in the Bible is that the number seven. All numbers are important in the Bible. One day we're going to give you a whole series of lectures just on the numbers of the Bible. But they're all important. And seven is a particularly because it is the spiritual number of the Bible. It is the number of spiritual significance. All things uh, compute seven digits, bear a remarkable image of the Most High God. For example, it was seven days in creating the heaven and the earth that God created the heavens and the earth. Jesus Christ spoke from the cross seven times. Not six and not eight. Noah waited in the ark for seven days before the flood, a mystery you'll never understand till you see why God planted seven on the whole face of the earth. David said he praised God seven times a day. I know you didn't know that, but read Psalm 119, verse 164. It says, seven times a day do I praise thee because of thy righteous judgments. Hey, isn't that beautiful? Isn't that beautiful? God promised to deliver you out of seven troubles. In Job 5, 19, he shall deliver thee in six troubles, yea, in seven there shall no evil touch thee. So you've got a promise for at least seven <laughs> mighty deliverances by the hand of God. Uh, God said he'd make your enemy to fly seven ways. Hey, I know some of you like that. I'm not talking about your mother-in-law now, uh, your, your, your real enemies. In Deuteronomy 28 and 7, it says, The Lord shall cause thine enemies that rise up against thee to be smitten before thy face. They shall come against thee one way, and they shall flee before thee seven ways. <laughs> hey, I, I'm, I'm sure you're, you're enjoying that. And there are other sevens in the Bible. There are seven names of Jehovah, Jehovah Jireh, Jehovah Shalom, Jehovah Shama, Jehovah Rapha, and, and so forth. In these lessons, we're going to show you seven steps to spiritual and supernatural resources of God. And I'm going to be bringing a lot of scriptures to you that you will enjoy, such as 2 Samuel 22, 37. Thou hast enlarged my steps. Now, that's what we want you to do. In these seven steps, we want you to enlarge your steps. We're delighted to have you with us in our beautiful and comfortable uh, surroundings here. And we just hope that God will uh, tremendously uh, bless you and anoint you and that we shall enjoy together <laughs> seven steps to kill your giants. We all have giants. Uh, let's kill them. In 1 Samuel uh, 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 chapter 17 and, and verse 41, it says the Philistines came and drew near unto David. So the person that we're going to talk about is, is David. And the men that bear the shield went before the Philistine. And so uh, this Philistine had a, a, a man that bore his shield before him. The Philistine looked about and saw David, and he disdained him. The Philistine stood over 10 foot high, and no doubt David was about 5 feet. For David was just a youth. He was Rudy, little little red red faced kid, and and of a fair countenance. You know, looked like he was eleven or twelve rather than seventeen. And the Philistine said, "Am I a dog that you come to me with a with, with a stave?" Evidently, he had a little a shepherd's stick in his hand. And the Philistine cursed David by the name of his gods. I curse you in the name of Dagon. Ah, that was boastful enough, wasn't it? The Philistine said, "Come unto me, and I give you flesh to the fowls of the air and to the beasts of the field. Going to feed him to the animals." David said to the Philistine, Thou comest with me with a sword, with a spear, with a shield. I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts. Oh, neighbors, learn how to fight your battles. Please, 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 please. Learn how to fight your battles. The God of armies, whom thou hast defied. Isn't that something? He calls Jehovah, and the word God there is Jehovah. He, has, he said, The Jehovah of the armies of Israel. Isn't that amazing? Isn't that amazing? The Lord of hosts, whom you have defied. The verse 46, which is the next verse. This day will the Lord deliver thee into mine hand, and I will smite thee, take thy head from thee. Hey, little five-footer talking to a ten-footer. And I will give the carcasses of the host of the Philistines under the fowls of the air. 
Man, he was going to lick a whole army. You getting it? You getting it? And the wild beasts of the earth and all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel. And so the seven steps to kill giants is a spiritual phenomenon. And it has to do with God blessing the total church and not just you, of course. It says, all this assembly shall know that the Lord saveth not with a sword or with a spear. Man, that was a sermon. Imagine being preached so, far, so long ago. The battle is the Lord's, and he will give you into my hands. And it came to pass that the Philistine arose. He was so big he couldn't stand up. He came and drew near to, to meet David, and David ran toward the enemy and, and to, to meet him. And David put his hand in his bag, took a stone, he slang it, and he smote the Philistine in his forehead, and that the stone sunk into his forehead, and he fell upon the face to the earth. <laughs> the first radar, the first radar. He, he took it, and he threw that stone, and the power of the Holy Ghost, or his guardian angel, grabbed it, and the old guy had, had armor all over. He found the little peephole, and he sunk it right in the little peephole. And David prevailed over the Philistine with a sling and with a stone. He smote the Philistine. He slew him, but there was no sword in his hand. David ran, stood up on top. The guy was so big. He stood up on top of the Philistine. He took his sword. He drew it out of the sheaf. The guy didn't have time to pull his sword. <laughs> and, and slew him. He cut off his head. And when the Philistines saw their champion dead, they fled. <clears throat> there are giants in our world that we live in today, neighbors. They challenge and they attack you and me. And uh, here are some vital steps that you can destroy your giants. All right, what are they? Number one, <clears throat> David defeated, or David was faithful <clears throat> in his labor. Now, if you're not going to be faithful, you're not going to kill giants. Now, let's be honest about it. In 1 Samuel 16, 11, it says that Samuel said unto Jesse, are, 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 are here all thy children? He said, there remaineth yet the youngest, and, and behold, he keepeth the sheep. Samuel said to Jesse, sin and fetch him, for we will not sit down until he come hither. And, and, and so David was out watching the sheep. All the rest of the family were uh, meeting the big shot, the prophet, who was also the king, uh, the, the leader of the whole nation. Uh, they, so they were entertaining uh, the big people. And little David was out watching the sheep singing the 23rd Psalm. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. And, but he was faithful in his labor. Now, if you're going to kill giants, there has to be faithfulness in your bones. There are just too many people that turn back. There are too many people that quit. There are too many people that don't go all the way, and you're failures. If you're going to be successful, if you're going to kill your giants, the number one step to take, the first step, the first step, the first step is that you be faithful. And so he was a faithful man. He was out there. The father knew he was taking good care of the sheep. He had nobody watching over him. He had nobody helping him. He was doing it all on his own. Number two, David was responsive to spiritual growth. Now, when I was 17 years old, I, 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 I got saved. I became a minister of the gospel, and uh, I've been responsive to spiritual growth until this minute. Right now, I am still spiritually growing. In 1 Samuel 16, 12, and David went, and, and they went and brought him in, and now he was Rudy, and with all of a beautiful countenance, a goodly to look at, and the Lord said, Arise and anoint him, for this is he. And Samuel took the horn of oil, anointed him in the midst of the brethren, and the Spirit of the Lord came upon David from that day forward. So Samuel rose up and went to Ramah. And so David, the youngest and the least of Jesse's seven sons, of Jesse's seven sons, said, I am ready for whatever the Lord wants. He could rebel and say, Oh no, I'm the youngest son here, and my, my, my big brothers here, they're so important. Uh, you anoint them. David was responsive to spiritual growth. So your first step, faithfulness. Your second step, responsive to God. Uh, don't stay stagnant and don't stay little <laughs> and don't stay ignorant, you know? Uh, it don't matter if a person starting ignorant, don't stay ignorant. Uh, learn, learn, learn. Anybody can learn and grow. Uh, don't stay the same size. All right, seven steps to kill your giants. He didn't just go out there raw and kill that giant. Now, you better believe me, uh, he had to be first faithful. He had to be second responsive before he could do the big thing. Most of us want to be, do the big thing first. It don't work that way. You have to take the first step before you get to the seventh. A lot of you are jumping high for the seventh step and you're missing it. You're sliding down on your backside. You need to, to say, wait a minute. Where do you start? You start where I started. You start where David started. You started with faithfulness. And then you grow in God. And number three, he was a comfort to others. And, and, and first Kings Excuse me. In 1 Samuel chapter 16 and verse 18, Then answered one of the servants and said, Behold, I have seen a son of Jesse the Bethlehemite. Now, 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 now here was the guy that was being seen. Uh, that, that, that he is cunning and playing. 
That meant he, 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 was a, he knew how to play instruments, uh, mu musical instruments. He was cunning in playing. And he is a mighty, valiant man. Some way or another, he had made people believe that he was a, a courage, a man of courage, a, a mighty man. <laughs> Still a kid, you know, but yet a mighty man and a valiant man. And listen, a man of war. Hey, now he had done something. He had done something. You don't get, you don't get a name like that before the king unless something's happened to you. And this is what it says. You better read it. He, was, he is prudent in matters. It means, you know, he's not a stupid guy. He doesn't yakety yak with his head. He's prudent in matters. He is comely in person and he and the Lord is with him. He, he is a good looking guy and Jehovah is with him. That is the, <laughs> you better write that one down. That is the greatest recommendation that's ever been made for a man that I know anything about. The greatest recommendation. And it came to pass that when an evil spirit came upon Saul, that David took his heart, he played with his hand, and Saul was refreshed and was well, and the evil spirit departed from him. Now, now when you can help others, when you can lift up others, when you meet a friend or a neighbor that's depressed, and you can pick him up, when you meet a person that's confused, and you can straighten him out, then you are a blesser. Now, and in order for him to be the great man and to go all the way to kill giants, he had to know how to comfort others. He was a comforter. He was much younger. Yeah, age has nothing to do with this. And so here was a man, faithful, responsive, and, and bringing comfort, and bringing comfort and consolation. Uh, uh, here was a man all down and out. So he played. <laughs> oh, tis the old time religion, tis the old, you know. And the man said, whoo, I feel better. David said, I'm glad to comfort you. If you're going to be great, you're going to be a blesser. You're going to be a helper. Get that mean thing out of your insides of you and that, that bad spirit out of you and become a happy person. That's the way you kill giants. <laughs> That's the way you kill giants. All right, number four. David was unafraid. Now, now you've got to get fear out of you. Fear can destroy you. It can destroy your home can destroy your relationship with your husband or your wife. I've had women that come to me and say, you know, I'm afraid my husband's going to leave me. Oh, uh, has he said so? No. Uh, has he been bad? No. What are you afraid of? I don't know. Phew. My Lord help us. You got to get junk like that out of you. God didn't start that. The devil started it. You can never kill giants if you've got fear in your heart. He was unafraid. In 1 Samuel 17, 34, David said to Saul, thy servant kept his father's sheep and there came a lion. Hey, hey, hey. Some of you are afraid of a jackrabbit. A lion came. And then he says, and then later a bear came. And listen, they took a lamb out of the flock. Now, 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 now get this thing. <laughs> they didn't just come and growl. They just, Ugh. no, no. It, it says they took a lamb. Look at the next verse, verse 35. And I went after him. That old lion grabbed the lion. He said, come back here, you rascal. And he took right off after a lion. Are you willing to chase lions? Well, you can't kill giants until you chase lions. Some of you are trying to kill giants and you hadn't bothered with a lion yet. He says, I took after him. He didn't only take after him. He says, I smote him. He killed him. I delivered the little lamb out of his mouth. I opened his old mouth and yanked it back and broke his jaw and took that lamb. And when he arose against me, I caught him by his beard. When that lion says, hey, I'm going to kill you too, he got him by his beard and by the top of his jaw and yanked it out of place. That was the end of his eating. He took care of that. Took him by the beard, smote him, and slew him. That servant slew both a lion and a bear. <laughs> hey, if you're going to kill giants, you better get a hold of your bears first. And this uncircumcised Philistine, talking about his big giant boy, 10 foot tall, shall be as one of them as the lion and the bear. See, he has defied the armies of Jehovah. Whew. You know, I'm tired of people defying the church. I'm tired of people talking against the church. It's about time we go after these lions and bears and eat them up, and get rid of them, and then start eating after our giants to take care of them too. David said, moreover, God, Jehovah, hath delivered me from the paw of the lion. Yeah, yeah, his old paw and from the paw of the bear with his growls. He will deliver me out of the hand of this Philistine, this giant, this big giant. And <laughs> old Saul, he didn't have any of these qualifications that we're talking about. He said, go, David, go, go. Uh, Jehovah be with you. Yeah, go. Yeah. Uh, he hadn't destroyed any, any lions nor any bears. 
But he, he told this young man, he said, you, you, you go. And so he was unafraid. That was, that was one of his qualities. That was one of the steps that he had to take, the seven steps. And that was the fourth one. The fifth step that he had to take was David challenged the challenger. We're always waiting for somebody else to start a stink and then see if we can cover it up. It's about time the church started the stinks. You there or not? It's about time we get after the devil. Don't wait until he stops, starts all of his crazy old shops down the street. Uh, go after him before he gets in there. Have a connection to know when he's asking and even applying for a permit to operate an adult bookstore. Go after him first. Don't wait. We need some vigilantes, spiritual vigilantes that'll say, hey, devil, we want you to know we're up to you and we are not afraid of you in Jesus' name. David challenged the challenger. <laughs> he, that was number five. In, in 1 Samuel, or in 1 Samuel chapter 17, verse 42, when the Philistine looked about and saw David, uh, he disdained him. Isn't that amazing? For he was but a youth, ruddy and of a fair countenance. He said, who is this little kid? Uh, who is this uh, Bobby Sox coming out here? Uh, who, who, who is this, key, this kid from the, uh, 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 from the little league that's coming out here? Uh, uh, I am a professional. I am not an amateur. I am a giant. I stand 10 foot tall. <laughs> you know, I have six fingers on each one of my hands. And I wear a number 18 shoe, not seven or eight. And, and you know, he, he, would, he says, who is this kid that's a youth and Rudy red faced and fair countenance, little baby face? You know, a baby face can fool you with Jesus behind him. And, and a young person can fool you with Jesus behind him. The Philistine said to David, am I a dog that you come to me with your stave? And he cursed him by his gods. The Philistine said to David, come to me and I'll give you a flesh to the fowls of the air and the beasts of the field. Then said David, uh, you come to me with a sword, with a spear, and with a shield. I come to you in the name, in the name of the Lord of hosts. That's the battle name of God. That's the battle name of God. I come to you with the Lord of hosts and the God of the armies of Israel. Did you know that God can be associated with armies? If, if America would be on the right side, the correct side, the good side, the positive side, or England or France or anybody else, you, God, God's going on your side. God's on the side of what's right for the people of this earth to bless them and to help them. And he said, I come to you in the name of the God, the God that he is the head of the armies of Israel. It says, you have defied him. You have mocked him. You have, you have cursed him. And verse 46 says, this day, brother, that was a prophecy for you. What a prophecy this young kid made. This day will the Lord deliver thee into mine hand. Now, now that takes courage. That's challenging the challenger. This day, the Lord will deliver you into my hands. I will smite you. Hey, smite your little guy. <laughs> little David talking like that. I will smite you. I'll take your head off. Whew. I'll give your carcasses. Uh, the carcass of the host of the Philistines. The whole army of you. I'm going to feed all of you to the buzzards. Yeah, I'll give you to the fowls of the air and the wild beasts of the earth shall eat you up right around where you are here right now. I've been to this valley where they fought personally. I have a stone. I should have brought along with me. I picked it up in that valley, uh, just about that big around, about two and a half inches through. And I think it might have been David Stone. Uh, I, I keep it in a secret place and it is very, very beautiful. I, sh I should put it in some wooden frame because I personally picked it up there in the Valley of Elah. And, and it's so beautiful in that valley. You know, the contour of the earth hasn't changed since then. And there's the hill this way and the hill this way. The children of Israel were over on the eastern side coming down from Hebron. And, and the Philistines were on the western side coming up from the, from the Mediterranean Sea. And there's this little valley here. And there's a little stream running by there too. That's where he got his stones. And I went down into that little creek and I, I picked up some stones, you know, just to be picking stones out of the same creek that, 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 that David picked up his stones. And so I can visualize this because I have been there and I have seen it. That's when we lived in Israel. I made visits there and, 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 and saw it and prayed to the, to the God of Israel in that same valley where David prayed. <clears throat> so I have a very personal relationship to this thing. And he said, I'll give, I'll give your, I'll give your uh, body uh, and all of the Philistines to the, to the wild beasts. And he said, and all this assembly, that's the both sides. That's the Israelite side and the, and the Philistine side. 
All this assembly shall know that the Lord save, not with sword and spear. My, what a sermon, what a sermon. You and I are always fighting our battles carnally with our minds, you know, with our emotions, with our wills, with our physical strength. And all this assembly shall know that Jehovah, Jehovah saveth not with a sword or spear. The battle is Jehovah's. Did you know that many times in the problems that you're having, that the battle that you're having is not really yours? It's God's battle. And, and, and did you know if you came against me uh, that, that I wouldn't do anything about it and God would smite you back? You say, why? All that I do, I do it for God. I don't do anything for Lester Sumrall. I do it for God. So if you came against me, you would hit God first because I'm just his servant and I'm just doing, only doing. I have no business of my own. I have nothing outside of ministering to you. I have no other activities except this, just this right here. I'm living only to love you and to bless you. So if you came against me, you'd meet God first and you'd have a problem with him. A lot of people have had problems with him because of it. He says the battle is God's. It's Jehovah's battle. He will give you into my hands. Man, that verse, that's verse 47. Isn't that terrific? Isn't that amazing? David, David said, I won't rely on human power, human skill, human force. I will rely upon God. Number six, uh, and uh, David conquered, conquered his giant. He killed his giant. That's what this first lesson's all about. He, he killed his giant. In 1 Samuel chapter 17 and verse 48, it came to pass when the Philistine arose and came and drew near to meet David that David hasted. Man, that's, that's what I like. I like a fast man. I like a man that runs into war, runs into battle, runs into trouble. He's not a scaredy cat. He's not waiting for you to hit first. I don't believe in that. He, uh, David hasted. He ran toward the army to meet the Philistine. Imagine, that little guy ran toward tens of thousands of our men all by himself. He had nobody with him, all by himself. He ran toward a whole army. It's right there in your book. Uh, read it. Verse 51, therefore David ran. He, he, he stood upon the Philistine. He took his sword. He drew it out of the sheath and, and slew him and cut off his head. And the Philistines saw the champion was dead and they fled. And they fled. And so David killed his giant. He killed his giant. That was point number six. Uh, point number seven is just as powerful as every other point. And I, I, that's what I must get across uh, to you. Very strong. In 1 Samuel 18 and 14, it says, after this, David behaved himself wisely in all his ways. It's so easy to become arrogant. And I hate to say it, but some, even some preachers, when they have a measure of success, you can't talk to them. You can't get to them. You got 14 secretaries to get through. They become, they become arrogant and they become, they think they're really great. I don't want to be bothered with you. You know, <laughs> uh, after such a great victory, he had the right spirit. God wants you not only to kill giants, he wants you to love him with all your heart and to give him the glory for the victories that you, that you have won. Walk circumspectly. It says David behaved himself wisely in all his ways. He didn't say, I'm David the giant killer. I am David the giant killer. It says Jehovah was with him. God was with him as he walked in and among human beings. All right, verse 16 says, all Israel and Judah loved David. Everybody loves a champion. Everybody loves a champion because he went in and out before them, before him. So uh, here, here, here we have the, the, the great sevens we, we, that we're going to have such a lot of fun with, the great sevens. And, and we have dealt with the number one here, seven steps to kill your giants. And then and our next one, we're going to give you seven steps into prosperity. And we want you to, uh, to, to get with these lessons, enjoy them tremendously, immensely. We want you to enjoy them. And, and uh, we want you to kill your giants, you know. <laughs> and we, ha we have given you what we believe to be the divine, the divine way to do it. The divine way to do it. And if you will do it this way, then you will find that God is your answer and that God will bless you in it. All right, may I bless you now. Father, uh, bless my friends, neighbors. Some of us have some mighty big giants out there. Big, big giants. Some of us are fearful and we can't kill giants in fear. We got to get rid of that. Some of us haven't made that spiritual contact with the great prophet of God, who is now the Lord Jesus Christ. In David's day, it was Samuel. We haven't made that spiritual contact yet. 
We cannot be great until we make it. Some of us haven't even been faithful of what we have been doing. We've just been messing around and wasting time. Then we cannot kill giants. We have to begin at the beginning and, and work our way up. There are seven steps and not just one. There are seven steps. David could have killed that giant and still missed it by being arrogant. He could have been an outcast that nobody loved and nobody appreciated and, and, and nobody wanted to see.